Hello friends. So welcome to this new section of physics of this module that is of de Broglie hypothesis. So first of all in the previous sections of quantum physics we have discussed about the wave particle duality that part, uh, electromagnetic waves exist both wave and particle nature that is known as photon. So let us now understand what is de Broglie hypothesis. So first let me write that down for you all. So de Broglie proposed that a wave is always associated with every moving particle and the wavelength of that wave can be determined by this formula that is lambda equal to h by p where p is the momentum p is the momentum of the particle and h you all know is the Planck's constant so this wave which is associated with a moving particle is known as matter wave so this wave is known as a matter wave the wavelength of matter wave is called de Broglie wavelength so the equation that is this equation is called the de Broglie relation or de Broglie wave equation so now if we have to prove the de Broglie equation we have to proceed like this we all know that e equal to h nu where nu is the associated frequency now for a relativistic particle the square of relativistic energy we can write it as e square is equal to p square c square plus m naught square c to the power 4 so here c is the velocity of light or we can write e square equal to p square c square since for photon for photon m naught equal to 0 since the photon does not have rest mass so we can say from here that e equal to pc now if you have e equal to pc that is equal to h nu so we can have p equal to h nu by c or we can say p equal to h by lambda since c by nu will be lambda let me write it down since nu equal to c by lambda so c by nu will be equal to lambda and the speed of photon in free space is c therefore we can say that lambda equal to h by p so that is the little proof for de Broglie wavelength formula now de Broglie assumed that the above relation is hold good for elementary particles like electrons thus for an electron of mass m the velocity v the de Broglie wavelength can be determined by lambda equal to h by m v that is the momentum the value of p so an important portion is finding out this is an important portion comes an exam that finding out the de Broglie wavelength of an electron subjected to a potential difference so let me write it down for you so now let us find out this problem so let us consider an electron of mass m and charge e if the particle is subjected to a potential difference of capital v so that it acquires a velocity of small v then what will be its kinetic energy its kinetic energy will be e equal to half of m into v square so in this case we can say ev is equal to half m v square and that is also equal to e or we can say v is equal to root over of 2 ev by m or v equal to 2 e by m root over of small e into v we are considering it as capital e that is the energy so if the de Broglie wavelength of this moving electron of momentum p is lambda then lambda equal to 
h by p we know that or we can say lambda equal to h by mv now if we finally try to find out the value of lambda it comes out to be lambda equal to h by p that is equal to h by putting all the values we get m into the value of v is this so 2e by m whole root over that is h by m into whole root over 2ev by m so what is the value that comes out finally that is we get lambda equal to h by root over 2 into m e into v so this is the value of the with de Broglie wavelength so now we can also write this as lambda equal to h by root over 2 m into capital E and now if we put all the values considering an electron we have h equal to 6.62 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule second then we have e that is the charge equal to 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb and also we have m that is mass of electron that is 9.11 into 10 to the power minus 31 kg so putting all these value in this equation we get the final equation to be lambda equal to 12.26 by root over v that is the potential difference in terms of angstrom so this is the value of de Broglie wavelength for an electron if you put the values of an electron so friends this is the next topic that is we are going to discuss the division and german experiment so as we are the de Broglie hypothesis we only call the name as a hypothesis because it was just a stated formula or a stated theory but it had no experimental proof but in 1927 the american physicist division and germer uh, decided to prove that experimentally so this is the setup basically so they were studying the scattering of electrons from nickel crystal target so this is the nickel crystal target they were studying the scattering of electron from this target the experimental uh, arrangement is this one so what is this contents it contain it consists of tungsten filament that is i have denoted as f and it is coated with zinc oxide a beam of electron from the heated filament f are accelerated by a potential difference of v so the potential difference of this ray is v between anode and cathode that is the filament so these electrons are culminated by passing through a system of narrow slits that i have drawn here this is the these are the system of narrow slits so this slit is very narrow one finally a beam of electrons emerges through a fine hole that is very narrow hole of the anode the whole arrangement is known as an electron gun so this whole arrangement is known as electron gun arrangement the apparatus is enclosed in an evacuated chamber okay the fine beam of electrons coming out of the fine hole are allowed to strike normally that is the angle is 90 degree on a nickel crystal the electrons are scattered in all directions by the atoms of the parallel atomic planes of the crystal the scattered rays in this case take part in constructive interference of the electron waves so the intensity of the electron beam scattered in a given direction is received with the help of a faraday cup detector this one that is i have named as c and is measured with the help of a galvanometer that i have measured uh, named as g the faraday cup c is designed in such a way that it can detect only the electrons scattered elastically by the nickel scatterer s this is the s so this faraday cup is designed such that it can only me measure or capture the electrons that are elastically scattered 
so by rotating the detector about this axis through the point O the intensity of the scattered beam can be measured for different values of scattering angle theta for different increasing values of accelerating potential V the variation of intensity I of scattered electron beam was plotted as a function of scattering angle theta in a polar graph so they both plotted this scattering uh, and with respect to theta in a polar graph so from the experiment it is observed the observation was made that a kink begins to appear in the curve at 44 volt or 45 volt of accelerating potential this per or kink becomes maximum at v equal to 54 volt and for scattering angle theta equal to 50 degree beyond 54 volt the spur again decreases this observation indicates that electrons with kinetic energy 54 electron volt for its scattering angle 50 suffer maximum scattering the spur at 54 volts offer the evidence for the existence of matter wave so let me write down the maximum values for you so 54 electron volts when correspond to theta equal to 50 degree then the maximum scattering occurs so what are the inference that we got from this experiment we got that the de broglie wavelength associated with an electron accelerated through a potential difference of v volt can be given by the formula that i have previously wrote down that is lambda is equal to 12.26 by root over v angstrom this is the value for lambda thus for v equal to 54 volts for v equal to 54 volts so what we get so we get the value of lambda equal to 1.66 angstrom applying bragg's law for first order ma uh, maximum from the parallel atomic planes of nickel crystal what we can say that from bragg's law i think you all know the bragg's law if we apply the bragg's law we get d sine of theta is equal to lambda so d sine of theta is equal to lambda so this is the inference that we can get so this result is in excellent agreement with the observed wavelength hence it verifies experimentally de broglie's hypothesis of the wave nature of moving particles so now let us jump up to the properties of de broglie's waves so what are the properties let me write that briefly for you the property number one is that lambda that is the wavelength is inversely proportional to the mass of the particle so lighter the mass of the particle lighter is the particle the more wavelength it have number two is matter waves are invisible they cannot be seen number three the faster the particle moves smaller is its de broglie wavelength so number three is in relation to momentum that is we know lambda equal to h by mv so higher the velocity higher the velocity lower is lambda number four is the de broglie wave guides the particle so these waves are also called pilot waves these are properties of the particle so these are also called pilot waves well number five we can say that the amplitude of the de broglie waves associated with the moving particle measures the probability of finding the particle in space at a particular instant so the wave associated with a large amplitude means a large probability of finding the particle at that particular position so larger the amplitude larger or greater is the probability of finding the particle at that point of space now i am going to discuss briefly a very important topic of this chapter and in the last topic that is the heisenberg's uncertainty principle so the most important is the formula that we can uh, derive from this 
So what does the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle states? It states that the product of uncertainties in the simultaneous measurement of position and momentum. Remember these terms position and momentum of a particle is equal to or greater than h cross. So what is this? It states that the simultaneous measurement of uncertainties simultaneously that is of position that is delta x and momentum that is of delta px can only be greater than or equal to h cross where h cross is equal to h by 2 pi where h is Planck's constant as you all know so this is the position momentum Heisenberg's uncertainty relation here for motion along x axis delta x is the uncertainty in the determination of position of the particle and delta px is the uncertainty in the determination of the corresponding momentum of the particle position and momentum are conjugated variables similarly the product of uncertainties in the simultaneous measurement of the energy and time at which the measurement was done of a particle is equal to or greater than h cross similarly like this we can also say that delta e that is energy and delta t that is the time at which it is measured will also be greater than or equal to h cross this is the energy time heisenberg's uncertainty relation here energy and time are two conjugated variables so this is the heisenberg's uncertainty principle and this statement with this formula along with this formula is very important from examination point of view so with this we have come to the end of this chapter and as well as this module that is of quantum physics hope to see you in the next video thank you